Hi, I want to talk about two examples of the quantum mechanical effects for particles in boxes. Now the two systems, one of which is very quantum, the other is very obviously not quantum, allow us a way of figuring out the minimum energy that a system could have and its minimum effective speed based off that energy. So the first system, we have an electron that is trapped in an infinite square well. That means outside the region where the particle is, there'd be an infinite potential energy and the region is 0.106 nanometers across, which is 1.06 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. Now, for the infinite square well, quantum mechanically, when you can find something to be in a box, you get discrete energy levels where those energy levels have an energy equal to the energy level n squared, the quantum number squared, times Planck's constant h squared, divided by a factor of 8, divided by the mass of the particle, which here is an electron, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms, and then divided by the size of the box, the distance across l squared. So if I plug in Planck's constant, n equals 1, 8, mass of an electron, size of this box, I end up with a lowest energy in this system of 5.36 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. And since the energy levels go like n squared, our next energy level would be 4 times this, then 9 times, 16 times, 25 times, and so on. And these values that you get with quantum mechanical systems all happen to be energy levels that are right around the electron volt in terms of energy. So if you divide by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules per electron volt, then you end up with a lowest energy in electron volts of 33.5 eV. Now in terms of minimum speed, I'm going to apply a classical kinetic energy formulation to this. And this is calculating the total energy. Well, if there's no potential energy, the total energy is the kinetic energy. So if the kinetic energy would be one half times the mass of our particle times the speed of our particle squared, the speed would be the square root of two times that rest energy divided by the mass. So if I take 2 times 5.36 times 10 to the minus 18 joules, divide by 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms, and take the square root of that, I get 3.43 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. And it's 1 one hundredth of the speed of light, so the Lorentz factor for that speed would be pretty small, but generally I start getting a little iffy about not using relativity once we start getting over a million meters per second, but relax. You don't run into relativistic quantum mechanics typically until you get into grad school in physics. So we're going to keep things classical as much as we can. So let's look at a classical system. Now, if you were to just have an elite major league pitcher and an elite major league catcher playing toss where the pitcher and catcher normally set up shop on a baseball diamond, you should have a practical infinite square well. Now, it's not, but in reality, there's no such thing as an infinite square well. It just can't happen. There are no infinities in real life. So a baseball has a mass of 0.145 kilograms, and a pitcher and catcher are usually about 18.3 meters away from each other on a baseball diamond. So the lowest possible energy that baseball can have, according to quantum mechanics, is still Planck's constant divided by 8 times our particle mass, 0.145 kilograms, divided by the separation distance where that ball is confined to be squared. So if the pitcher and catcher serve as infinite walls, then that baseball has a minimum energy of 1.1 times 10 to the negative 69 joules. Now, that means it's moving, in theory. 
Well, the speed would be two times that energy divided by 0.145 kilograms, and we take the square root. So essentially we're looking at something close to the square root of 10 to the negative 69. We'd get a minimum speed of 1.2 times 10 to the negative 34 meters per second. Now I know people criticize baseball as being really, really slow, but just to give you an idea of what this quantum limit to zero speed would be, if we were to wait the entire lifetime of the universe, or about half a baseball game, then that object would have moved about half the diameter of a quark or less. So basically this is the mathematical definition of zero speed. Thanks for watching.